to get here. Um, they, they don't teach as much about geography up north. And, uh, um, but actually, I was supposed to give a talk at uh, this Go Open conference in Oslo last year, but then there was this volcano in Iceland that happened, and I got, uh, so I didn't get in until pretty late last night, and I'm walking by the convention center, and they have that little sign outside, this electronic sign that says what's happening at the convention center, and it said something about um, pest control, and I'm thinking, POSCON, pest control, I'm, did, am I at the wrong, you know, because it had been after being on the airplane for like, you know, gazillion hours, and I'm, uh, but I think I'm in the right place, and uh, I want to thank all of you for uh, spending a little time with me to talk about uh, sugar. So um, sugar is uh, the software that, ooh, I forgot to start my timer. Um, I, I, I wrote a little, uh, a little timer, a little clock to sort of make, take, take account of my elapsed time so I don't go over and leave time for some questions. Um, but the, uh, I, I'll leave it like that for the moment. Uh, Sugar is the, the software that uh, we wrote for the One Laptop Per Child project. And what I want to do is I'm going to talk a little bit about One Laptop Per Child, some of the motivations behind that, and then talk a lot about Sugar and uh, free software. So, but I want to start off, um, this is uh, Bernie. Bernie's one of our uh, developers, and he came to my house for Thanksgiving. And this is sort of the Thanksgiving spread. And uh, I, I, I do a lot of baking. I'm a big believer in, in, the, in learning in the kitchen. There's a lot of opportunity for uh, experimenting. And, and kitchen uh, you know, chemistry is typically an open source kind of endeavor. Uh, so, um, but what I do is on, on Thanksgiving, I make a lot of stuff I don't make the rest of the year. So I, I've got a, it, it's not the stuff that's ready at hand. I've got to actually reach a little bit for some of the things. Get this recipe after from me. It's uh, this uh, gingerbread pudding cake. Awesome. But um, the, the, the reason why I showed you Bernie and the, and the pies is because I want to talk about kitchens and how we organize our kitchens, where we put things on the shelves in our kitchens. Because some things, you know, the everyday things we put on the low shelf. Coffee machine in my kitchen is very accessible. Uh, other things are a pie. The, the things I use around Thanksgiving once a year, I have to reach for. So the question is, what do we want to put on our children's low shelf? What do we want to have them have that's ready at hand versus the things they have to reach for? And I'm going to argue that computation should be in every child's low shelf, that we want kids to engage in computation. And it's not because we want kids to all grow up to be computer scientists. It's because when you're computing, you're thinking, you're debugging, you're engaging in, in problem solving. And that's a great place to learn. It's a safe place to learn. So when we started the One Laptop Per Child project, our, our goal was to give every child the opportunity to learn how to learn. Not to learn programming or to learn this or learn that. Uh, I don't know anything about curricula, and I certainly don't know anything about the curricula of Peru or Rwanda or all these other places, and I, don't, I shouldn't. I shouldn't be telling them what to teach, but what we wanted to do was we wanted to give them an opportunity to give their children an opportunity to learn learning and to engage in, in, in authentic problem solving, and we thought that the way to do that was to give them access to computation. So part of giving them access to computation is giving them a device to compute on. And this is the Exo laptop we developed at One Laptop Per Child in 2006. It's called the, um, it was called the $100 laptop, but it still costs more than $100. But other than that, it met most of the rest of its design goals in the sense that it's, um, it's got a handle. I don't know why all computers don't come with a handle. Um, you can drop it. And I think that was this, not this. Uh, I, I think it'll still turn on. I haven't even turned this one on yet. Yeah, the power light went on. Anyway, um, it's got, um, you know, it's, it's, you know, you can spill stuff on it. It's all, got all that neat stuff. You can turn it and use it as an e-book reader. It's got an absolutely beautiful display. It works in full sunlight. 
Um, super low power, the 1.75 machine, which has an ARM processor, really does work with solar or with a hand crank. Um, so all, the, all these reasons why this is a pretty neat machine for kids and, and maybe even for other people too. But um, the real issue is, in my mind is, is not just having access to computing, but what do you use that computer for? What do you do with it? And that's where sugar comes in. Because sugar is it's free software that's all about having the kids engage in exploring the world, but being expressive with what they find, and then reflecting upon what they're doing. Because all three of those things are important to learning. Those are all three fundamental to, to learning. And there's, there's accountability within sugar. It, it's not just anything goes. Um, so I, I got to show you, if, you know, pictures of kids with laptops. And it's, it's actually, it's really easy to take pictures of kids smiling with laptops. And these kids are smiling. Um, the reason why I like this particular picture is because in, in a very subtle way it shows not just kids with the laptops, but kids learning with the laptops. And let me explain. It, it's subtle, but, but I, I think you'll get the point. You might, you see that the kids put stickers on the laptops? Well, we, when we designed the laptop, um, we put this texture on the laptop to prevent the kids from putting stickers on the laptops. But as you can see, the kids figured out how to do it anyway. <laughs> this is great, because the kids encountered a problem and they solved their problem. And so two things happened. They solved their problem and they learned that they could solve problems. Bingo. This is a great picture of kids with laptops. So, this is, this is what we want to have happen. And um, yeah, it, it's, I, I don't think that uh, I have to argue very hard to, to, to assert that the, the next generation is inheriting a lot of tough problems from us. And what can we give them? Well, we can give them some solutions, but we've been sort of fumbling around, not doing a very good job of that. Or we can give them the tools to allow them to be problem solvers and, and come up with solutions. Um, so this is not the factory. This is uh, uh, some kids in, in Paraguay uh, that have set up their own little business repairing laptops. And um, we, we put extra screws in the handle because we figured the kids were going to lose them when they were ripping them open. The warranty is not valid until you open it. Same goes with the software. So. There, there, there are just a few basic principles behind sugar. Uh, some of it has to do with, with, with being human, because we designed the software for people. Um, and every one of us being human is expressive. That's part of being human. Every one of us being human is social. That's also part of being human. And then finally, part of being human is to be both a learner and a teacher. And so then how do we take those basic pillars of, of humanity and transform them into learning. Well, first of all, learning is not something that happens to you. It's something you do. So learning is, is action. And we, we're not going to fight against the idea that you know, the, the conventional wisdom of a teacher handing out knowledge objects. But rather, what we're going to do is we're going to undermine that by also giving the opportunity for actually putting, putting knowledge to work, which is really l learn through doing. And that's sort of our mantra, learn through doing. And the other is, and I, I only just realized, I, I, I never knew where this quote came from, but it turns out this was Albert Einstein. Love is a better master than duty. And so part of what we want is we want kids to do. And if you want more, more learning, you want more doing, well, if they love what they're doing, they're going to do it more. Uh, here's an example. So this is Peru. And uh, it's hard to see in the slide, but he's in chat. And you can see he's been writing quite a bit. And he's actually chatting to a little girl sitting right next to him, his girlfriend. Now, you know, those of you who are teachers realize why he's not talking in class, because God forbid the kids talk in class. But um, the, um, the other thing that's happening is he's writing. We want kids to write. Pretty good motivation that you want to you know, 
convince your girlfriend how cool you are. So, you know, writing is, is, is happening here. He's learning, but he's learning around something he's passionate about. So one of the, the, the things we're interested in is, again, I, I said there's some structure to what we do. It's not anything goes. The, the role of the teacher changes from being the person who distributes knowledge to being the person that is guiding the children through a process of discovery, but towards specific goals. And w w I, I, let me take an example, calculus. Calculus has been invented twice in the history of mankind. Just twice. Only two times was calculus ever invented. Okay, once in, in Germany and once uh, in, in, in the UK, and uh, around the same time, actually. But that's it. It's never been invented any other time in any other place in any other culture. So to expect that kids are going to invent calculus on their own, I think, is asking a lot. Okay, so we don't want to set the, the bar so high, but what we want to do is we want to guide them towards those principles, guide them towards those ideas, guide them towards the powerful ideas that are going to enable them to do powerful things, put things on that low shelf in easy reach for them that they can do powerful things. With. So this is an old example from Barry Newell. Uh, and this is just 40 different uh, challenges in Logo to make these shapes. And you just put this up on the wall, and already you've got the kids engaged. Oh, I did number 13 last night. You know, and uh, well, we'll go over some of that in, in, a, in a few minutes as well. But the idea that you're in, engaging them in, in, in looking at, you know, so this is not an arbitrary set of shapes that Barry put together. This is a set of shapes that guide or, or take the children down a path of discovery. Around, in this case, a discovery around some mathematical principles. So Cynthia Solomon, who was one of the inventors of the logo language back in the 60s, uh, once said that, you know, said debugging is the big deal. 